area of rhombuses and kites, we're at 10.1D, which means we have three previous videos for Chapter 10 that are in the description if you need them, okay? A kite or rhombus with two diagonals, D sub 1 would be diagonal 1, and D sub 2 would be diagonal 2. So we have one diagonal, the green one, another diagonal, the orange one, same with the rhombus. They can be divided into two congruent triangles with a base of D sub 1 and a height of half D sub 2. So here we've got two different triangles. We've got our base as D sub 1 and half of the second diagonal, half D sub 2 for our height. Same with the rhombus. We can make sense of the formula for area. Take a look at this diagram of a kite. The area of each triangle, this one and this one, would be half D sub 1, so it would be half of this green line, times half of D sub 2. That would give us 1 fourth of the first diagonal times the second diagonal. For the, that's just for each triangle. For the total area, we would do two of these. If that's the area of one triangle, then to find the area of the entire kite, we'd do two of these, wouldn't we? So we'd have two times one-fourth times the first diagonal times the second diagonal, which would give us half d sub 1, d sub 2 for the total area of a kite or a rhombus. This means the area of a rhombus or kite with diagonals d sub 1 and d sub 2 is a equals half d sub 1, d sub 2. We can find the measurements of rhombuses and kites by using the formula for their area. If we need to find d sub 2 of a kite in which d sub 1, that first diagonal, is 16 centimeters, and we know the area is equal to 48 centimeters squared, we can put it into our formula. Area equals half times the first diagonal times the second diagonal. We know the area is 48. We have 48 equals half, here's our d sub 1, 16, times d sub 2. We multiply the half by the 16, we get an 8. Now we have 48 equals 8 d sub 2. We want to solve for d sub 2, so we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient 8. We get 6 is equal to d sub 2. So we know our second diagonal is a 6, and it's in centimeters, so we know it's centimeters, right? We can use the symmetric property of equality to rewrite it so that the d sub 2 is on the left and the 6 is on the right. Here we need to find the area of this rhombus, and we have our area formula for the rhombus. We can see that the first diagonal is a 6x plus 4 inches, and the second diagonal is 10x plus 10 inches. We can FOIL these binomials. We have half times 6x plus 4 times 10x plus 10. When we FOIL this, we get 6x times 10x, which gives us 60x squared. Then we have 6x times 10, which gives us a 60x, and when we do 4 times 10x, we get a 40, so we get 100x, and then we get 4 times 10, which is 40. We distribute this half, half of 60x is 30, of 60x squared is 30x squared, half of 100x is 50x, and half of 40 is 20. And it's area, so we know it's in inches squared. And that is our area. We don't know the value of x, so that is our area. The diagonals of a rhombus or kite are perpendicular, and the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. So for this rhombus, we've got this point, this vertex A right here. Well, this segment AE is congruent to CE, and this segment DE is congruent to BE. See that? But on a kite, we've only got this segment is congruent to this segment. Now take a look at this diagram. We can see we have a diagonal here, this green one, and we actually have another diagonal here. The green one would be our first diagonal, d sub 1. It's x plus y. And this one is 9, and it's going to be a congruent segment to this one. So that's going to be a 9. So really, d sub 2 is equal to 2 times 9, isn't it? We've got a triangle here that has a leg of 9 and a leg of x and its hypotenuse is 41 feet. Over here, 
if this is a 9 here, just like that, then that means we have a leg that's 9, we have a leg that's y, and we have a hypotenuse that's 15 feet. Well, the diagonals d sub 1 and d sub 2 form four right triangles, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find x and y. We're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we'll use the 9 as our a, so we have 9 squared plus x will be our b, so we have x squared, and it's going to equal our c squared, our hypotenuse, 41 squared. 9 squared is 81, and 41 squared is 1,681. When we subtract 81 from both sides of the equation to solve for x squared, we get x squared is equal to 1,600. We remove the two exponent by putting a radical around this side, and we get the square root of 1,600 as 40, so x equals 40 feet. So we know this portion d of our first diagonal, x, is 40 feet. We can do the same thing for y. We have a 9, a y, and a 15, so we do 9 squared plus y squared equals 15 squared. That's 81 plus y squared is equal to 225. To solve for y squared, we subtract 81 from each side and get that y squared is equal to 144. We remove the two exponent by putting a radical around this side, and we get y is equal to 12 feet. But we're not done. We're trying to find the area of the entire kite. Now we know that x is equal to 40 feet and y is equal to 12 feet. We can use d sub 1 and d sub 2 to find the area of the kite. Here's our formula. And we know d sub 1 was equal to x plus y because it went all the way across the kite. And so that gives us 40 plus 12 this x plus the y, that's 52. And d sub 2 was 2 times 9, so it was 18. We do half times 52 times 18. That means half times 936, which means 468 feet squared. It's squared because we're doing area. There are art applications to what we're doing. Many of you are familiar with origami. It's the Japanese art of folding paper. You combine folds and we can make intricate designs like this swan. In Europe in the 17th and 18th century, napkin folding was a well-developed genre that flourished. Even today, if you go on vacation or go to a hotel or a fancy restaurant, you'll see your napkin folded in a very pretty way, or you'll see the towels on the end of the bed folded like little bears or dogs or whatever. Well, a tangram is a puzzle that originated in China and consists of seven flat shapes. They're called tans, and they're put together to form figures. And the object of the puzzle is to form specific shapes when only given an outline or silhouette and using all seven pieces, and no overlapping is allowed. So you would have these seven separate pieces, and you'd have to make a bird or a rabbit or a boat or a swan or a cat or a house or maybe even a rocket ship. So these seven separate pieces, we can rearrange them to make this rocket ship or any one of these. And there's probably many, many more. That's a tangram. So take a look at this tangram and look at this red square right here. And the pieces of a tangram are arranged in a square in which the side is four centimeters. So they're all different sizes. If this one had a side of four centimeters and it was really small, look, we've got four pieces here, don't we? So that means each one of these is one centimeter. We can use the grid to find the perimeter and area of this red square. So for the perimeter, each side of the red square is a diagonal of the square of the grid. That's a diagonal, that's a diagonal, that's a diagonal, that's a diagonal. And each grid square has a side length of one centimeter. So the diagonal is two, the square root of two centimeters. That means the perimeter is four, for this red square, it's four of these sides, which would be four times the square root of two centimeters. We can do that on our calculator as approximately 5.6566 centimeters. Okay, we can find the area. For the area, the red square is also a rhombus, isn't it? 
and the diagonals d sub 1 and d sub 2, so we'd have like a d sub 1 and a d sub 2, each measure 2 centimeters. So its area is a equals half d sub 1, d sub 2, and since d sub 1 and d sub 2 are both 2 centimeters, we'd have half times 2 times 2, which would be half times 4, which would be 2 centimeters squared. And the side lengths of the red square, we know they're the square root of 2 centimeters, so the area is S squared, it would be side times side, wouldn't it? So it would be square root of 2 times square root of 2, or square root of 2 raised to the second power, which would just equal 2 centimeters. We would remove the radical sign and that 2 exponent, wouldn't we? Now, depending on what school you're going to, you would have covered this in algebra. Some of you may have not. Some schools are going to cover this in algebra too. But if you're very confused about taking off the radical with that 2 exponent, what we're doing is we reduce the index of the radical and exponent with the 2. So there's, on every square root, there's a little 2 index right here, unless otherwise noted with a 3 or a 4 or more. But there's like a little invisible 2 there for the square root of 100. That's its index. And we can take this radical sign off and this 2 exponent away and just make it 100 because that's what it equals. What we're doing is the square root of 100, well, that's 10 times 10, so the square root is 10, and 10 to the second power is 100. So you can just automatically take off a 2 exponent and the radical sign when the index is just a regular square root, like index of 2, and we'll just have 100. And actually, if our index is a 3 for a cube root, and we've got the cube root of 125 raised to the third power, because that's a 3 and that index is a 3, we can just take the exponent and radical sign off, and it's 125. Same thing if it's the fourth root, and it's raised to the fourth power. We just take the radical sign off and the exponent and index away, and we just have a 2. And if you're curious about that, I'll have a link to Algebra 2, Chapter 7 that teaches about the index and the roots of radicals, okay? So that's why we ended up with just 2 centimeters when we had the square root of 2 raised to the second power. So now we're done with 10.1. It was in four parts, A, B, C, D. We're going to move on to 10.2. We're going to develop pi. We're going to talk about the circumference and area of a circle. We're going to talk about the area of a regular polygon. I'll have a link in the description about Tangram puzzles, and maybe you can even find one on the internet that you can print out and try to make figures yourself. So that's the area of rhombuses and kites. That's why we use that formula, and I hope I'll see you next time, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.